Hey Algebra students, time for another factoring video. This time we're going to factor trinomials that are a little bit harder to do. Uh, in particular, we're going to have trinomials like this that don't just start with x squared. Last time we were able to figure out how to factor trinomials that start with x squared. It's pretty easy. This one's going to be actually also pretty easy, okay? So first off, you see something like this and you think, oh man, what am I going to do? Here's an idea. Look at the three terms. Do they have anything in common? Uh, yeah. They're all divisible by three. This just got ridiculously easy, okay? <clears throat> because now you say, this is just three times, well, three x squared divided by three is x squared. Negative six x divided by three is negative two x. And negative 72 divided by three is negative 24. So it's just three times this stuff here. And now, I know how to do that. Let's see, this is going to be x and x. I've got a negative product, which means I'm going to have one positive and one negative term. And this time I want two numbers that multiply together to be 24, that whose difference is 2. That's going to be 6 and 4. I want them to add up to negative 2, so that's going to be negative 6 plus positive 4. So x plus 4, x minus 6. I apologize. I probably insulted your intelligence by giving you such an easy problem. Uh, please forgive me. Okay? Um, let's see if this one's any better. We have 2x squared plus 3x plus 20. Um, hmm. All right, this time, hey, this one's even, this one's even, this one's not. So we can't do what we just did. But we're factoring, right? So let's just draw our parentheses for the factors. And I know from past experience that this is always the product of the first two terms. This times this. This is always the product of the last two terms. And this is the combination of this product and this product. Okay? My outside and my inside. So fortunately, there's only one way to get 2x squared, and that is 2x times x. All right, so I'm feeling pretty good. Now, what ways to get negative 20? Well, I know one's positive, one's negative. And then aside from that, I can have 1 times 20, I can have 2 times 10, or I can have 5 times 4. And, and that's it. That's, that's, those are my only choices. OK, so now I need to think about one of those pairs is going to go in here in some way. So now I need to think about which one I'm going to use. And let's think again about exactly what's happening here. I'm going to take this term times this term over here, and I'm going to, I'm going to multiply those together, and I'm going to add it to this term times this term. OK? Remember how outside, inside, how you add those, you combine those together? OK, one thing to think about, and, and, and when I do that, I'm going to get negative 3x. Now, one thing to think about is odds and evens. Think about when you're adding an odd number plus an even number. You get an odd number. If you add odd plus odd, you get even. If you add even plus even, you get even. OK? Also think about odds and evens when you multiply. Even times anything is even. And the only way you get odd is odd times odd. So I want to combine two terms to get an odd term. That means one of these things has to be odd and the other one has to be even, which means these two numbers here cannot be 2 and 10. Because if I use 2 and 10, that would give me two even products here. I can't combine those to get an odd, to get an odd middle term. All right? So that means I need to use this one or this one. I'm thinking it's going to be this one, and I'll tell you why. If I use this one, it seems like I'm going to get one really big term and one really small term whose difference is probably not just going to be 3. It's probably going to be bigger than that. So I'm going to aim for 5 and 4. And in particular, since this is a 2x here, I know that this product is going to be even. I want this one to be odd, which means my 5 has to be here, and my 4 is going to be there. So now, 5 times x is 5x. 2x times 4 is 8x. I want them to combine to be negative 3x. So that means I want this one to be negative. So that means this has to be negative, and this has to be positive. And there's my answer. The factors 
2x plus 5 times x minus 4. Okay? Now, you may be thinking to yourself, whoa, or you may be thinking to yourself, hey, that wasn't so bad at all. Okay, for those of you who say that wasn't so bad at all, good for you. For those of you who are less happy than that, there's another way. So let's look at that other way. Um, just give myself a little room here. Remember how when we're, factor when we're multiplying binomials, sometimes we'll make a little box here? Well, let's make that box and let's go backwards. So the 2x squared, I know where that goes. That goes here. The negative 20, I know where that goes. That goes here. So now all I need to do is I need to figure out what goes in these two boxes that gets combined to make the negative 3x, and then figure out what's going to go along the sides, and those are going to be my factors. OK, here's the tricky, well, it's not tricky. Here's the important part. The important part is that, as it turns out, this times this is the same as this times this, which means I know what the sum of these two terms is. It's negative 3x. My sum is negative 3x. And I know what the product of these two terms is. It's the same as the product there. So my product is negative 40x squared. All right, well, let's just focus on the coefficients. My sum is negative 30. Sorry, my sum is negative 3. My product is negative 40. That's going to be negative 8 and positive 5. Because negative 8 plus positive 5 is negative 3. Negative 8 times positive 5 is negative 40. And in particular, now it's not just think about the coefficients, let's think about the whole thing. It's going to be negative 8x and positive 5x. Because when I add them, I get negative 3x. When I multiply them, I get negative 40x squared. So I'll put one one place and one another place, doesn't matter which. Negative 8x, positive 5x. Okay? Now, negative 8x and 2x squared. What do they have in common? What, what can I factor out from these two terms? I can factor out a 2x. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times negative 4 is negative 8x, right? x times 5 is 5x. And negative 4 times positive 5 is negative 20. And it works. Here are my two factors, x minus 4 and 2x plus 5, just like we got over here. Huh? Kind of cool, huh? If you ask me, when you say, well, which, which, uh, which method should I use? I would generally start with this one, because if you do this one for a while, you start to develop pretty good intuition. But if it's not working for you, move over here. Because this one will pretty much always work. If this doesn't work, then I'll bet you it can't be factored. And some trinomials can't be factored. Sometimes you have something here that simply doesn't have factors. And so if it doesn't have factors, what would we call it? We would call it, we'd call it prime. It would be a prime trinomial. All right? Let's look at one more. We've got 4x squared plus 5x minus 21. OK, well, let's just do the two methods we just looked at. Uh, we'll start with some regular old factoring. And I've got 4x squared, which is, of course, 2x times 2x, right? Or 4x times x. Ooh, aha. Uh -huh. mm. OK, not quite sure there. So it could be 2x times 2x. It could be 4x times x. And then we got negative 21. Uh, so I know I've got one positive, one negative. Got that down. And 21, there's really only two ways to get 21. 21 times 1 or 3 times 7. That's good. OK? So now I've got to figure out which combination of those to use. And if you remember, outside plus inside is going to get you if we combine those two, that's going to get us our middle term, which is a uh, uh, positive 5x. OK, now, again, think about the odds and evens. If I have 2x and 2x, then I'm going to get an even product here and an even product here. And I'm going to have even plus even is 5. No, it's not. Even plus even is not 5. Even plus odd is 5, which means 2x and 2x is not going to work, all right? 
So it's going to have to be 4x and x. OK, good. That's, that's uh, um, I'm, I'm halfway there now. So now, uh, again, I have this thing where 21 and 1, that's just a, um, uh, one's going to be really big and one's going to be really small. And I don't think the difference is going to be 5. So I think it's going to be 3 and 7. So now I just have to look at this and say, well, let's see. 4 times 7 minus 3 times 1 is not 5. 4 times 3 minus 7 times 1, that's, uh, that's 12 minus 7. That's 5. So 4x, this is negative 12x. And uh, 5, 5 times x gets me, I'm sorry, not 5, 3. Hold it. Whoa, what am I doing? That's 3. That means this one's going to be 7. There we go. And so that gives me a positive 7x. So now I got negative 12x plus 7x is positive 5x, right? No, it's not. Ah, it's negative 5x. What can I do? I got a negative 5x instead of a positive 5x. What can I do to fix this? It's easy. Switch the signs. Make this one negative, make this one positive, and all of a sudden, all of our troubles melt away. Okay? Now I've got positive 12x minus 7x, which is positive 5x, and those are my factors. Okay? Or maybe that's not your cup of tea, and you'd prefer the box. Okay? Let's do the box. All right? Uh, again, I've got 4x squared right here. I've got negative 21 right there. I know that the sum of my factor, of my uh, 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 two terms here, is going to be 5x. And I know that the product of my two terms, I didn't spell that exactly right, I don't care, is going to be 4x squared times negative 21, which is negative 84x squared. Okay? Again, let's just focus on the coefficients 5 and negative 84. All right, so I want two numbers that multiply together to be negative 84. So that means one's positive, one's negative. Uh, and whose sum is positive 5. So in other words, two numbers that multiply together to be 84 whose difference is 5, since one's positive, one's negative. Uh, 7 and 12. Got it. All right? And let's see. Since I want the sum to be a positive 5, I want it to be positive 12 and negative 7 since 12 is greater than 7. So plus 12x and minus 7x. All right, we're well on our way here. Because now, what do negative 7x and 4x squared have in common? Very little, just an x. OK? x times what is 4x squared? Well, that would be 4x. 4x times what is 12x? That would be 3 x times what is negative 7x? That's negative 7. And negative 7 times positive 3 is negative 21, and it works. And those are my two factors there, x plus 3 and 4x minus 7, just like we saw right there. OK? Hope this helps. And uh, we're not done yet. There's more factoring to be done, but this is enough for right now. OK? See you later.